well, 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 look who's back. <laughs> you said you wouldn't come back, but you did. No, don't go. Don't go. And you know what? While you're here, let's do the free response question number four from the 2017 Calculus AB exam. All right. Um, unlike questions one and two, question four is a lot like three where there is no calculator allowed, but there is good news. These problems are, I like to think, less complicated in terms of the math we need to do. Why? Because we don't get a calculator. Let's start this. So number four states, the function f satisfies f of 0 equals 20. That looks like it might come in handy at some point. The first derivative of f satisfies the inequality where the first derivative is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 7. That is our interval as shown in the table above. For all x in the closed interval from 0 to 6. Okay. Okay, selected values of f prime are shown in the table above. The function has a continuous second derivative for all real numbers. And A asks us, use a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals of equal length indicated by the data in the table to approximate the value of f of 6. Okay, so really area under the curve is the same thing as the integration. All right, so let me go here, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, this one, let's go pencil gray. Okay, we're going to integrate, all right? That's area under the curve. However, Riemann sum, whether they're an LRAM for the left, or RRAM for the right, or MRAM for the middle, we do not have to integrate because these are approximations, okay? Approximate the value. All right, so what we do is as follows. If I were to integrate this table from 0 to 6, okay, now keep in mind the table is the derivative. This would give me the original function. What do I mean? I've done this on a few other questions. There's the original function, the derivative, and the second derivative. This is always one derivative away, right? Those are d's for derivative. But if I go backward, it's an integration, okay? So if I have f prime and go backward, that's my original equation, okay? So I would have my original equation for my upper bound 6 minus my lower bound in the original equation of 0. And this is what I'm going to use, all right? Let me get rid of this right here. The thing is, we don't have an equation to do the integral, so we're going to use Riemann sum. In this case, a midpoint Riemann sum. So instead of this integration, I'm going to approximate it using a Riemann sum. Now, I want to be honest with you. When I first started doing these, okay, I got 0 to 6. And if I have three subintervals, that means each subinterval should have a length of 2. I used to go, okay, from 0 to 2. Then I would go from 2 to 4. Then I would go from 4 to 6. But look at the 2 and the 4. I just, there's too many lines there. It doesn't look like I have three subintervals. So I started training myself to go right through the number instead of next to it. What does that mean? I go from 1 or 0, I'll be okay, to 2. That's my first subinterval right here. My next subinterval goes from 2 to 4. Now there's no mistake with like double lines. Then my next interval goes from 4 right to 6. Okay, now that's clearly three partitions or subintervals. Each of them have a width of 2. Okay, width of 2, width of 2, that's a width of 2. All right, so if I'm using MRAM, I'm going to take the middle value, the middle value of each partition or subinterval, 3.5 is the middle, it's in between 2 and 4. 0.8 and 5.8. All right, I'm going to add those up, and I got to multiply by the width, which is 2. So I'm going to take 3.5 plus 0.8 plus 
Okay, and I take that sum and I multiply it by my width or my height of 2, depending on what you want to call it. We need to find out what f of 6 is. That's what we're solving for. So we should have f of 0. Okay, if I'm solving for something, I should have one unknown. This I should know. It's given to me in the problem. f of 0 is 20. Woohoo! Nice. Now this is really easy. It's almost like an Algebra 1 problem. So, all right, uh, 3.5 and 0 0.8 is 4.3 plus 5.8. That's 1. Is that 10.1? That is 10.1. That's a point right there. I got to double that, and I get 20.2. All right. Now, 20.2 is going to equal f of 6 minus 20. So all I've got to do at this point is add 20 to both sides. And that's our approximation. 40.2 is our approximation of f of 6. It's not exact because it's not an integral, an exact integral. It's an approximation because we're using a Riemann sum. So you should get 40.2. There you go. That wasn't complicated at all. 4B is sort of an oddball question. I really don't see them ask things like this that often, uh, especially the way you've got to figure it out. It's just it's a little weird, but it is very doable. All right, you just got to know what you need to pull from. Determine whether the actual value, the actual value of f of 6 could be 70, and explain your reasoning. Oh, my God, we've got to explain. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're going to do. I know in order to find f, I need to integrate, all right, I need to integrate my derivative of f to get the original function of f. Okay, but here's the kick to the caboodle, all right, that's going to give me f of 6 minus f of 0. We know this. We don't know what the numbers are exactly, but here's what might be difficult to decipher. 70. Okay. 70. The derivative, okay, the first derivative of f satisfies the inequality. Yeah. Okay, at most, any derivative, at most, can be 7, not bigger. That's what the inequality is telling us there. You know, when I first did this problem, it took me a bit. I'm like, what is going on? I'm not taking the derivative. I'm not really taking the integral, even though I set one up. Um, it wasn't a very clear problem to me. And again, I think it's an oddball problem. But you see this here, at most, my slope is going to be a positive 7, go up 7, right? Across these 6, from 0 to 6, across those 6 jumps, all right? So for every one jump up, like from 0 to 1, to the right, I should say, for every jump 1 to the right, my slope is only going to go up 7. Then I'm going to go 1 to 2 and go up 7 again, at the most, which means... Through six movements, there's three, four, five, and six. Through all those movements right one, I can go up seven on my graph. I have six sevens, okay? I have six sevens. If you didn't understand that, pause that and rewatch it again. So that means at most... This should be 6 sevens, which is 42. And that's how I get 42. At most, that's what this expression is going to end up being. So it's less than or equal to at the biggest value of 42, not any bigger. All right? Well, they told us in, in the original problem here, the description of it, or the question, that f of 0 was 20. And f of 6 minus 20. We still have it. We just add 20 to both sides. Once it's set up, it's e 
I mean, it's real easy once it's set up. It's just I, I've really not done anything like that where I've had to take six sevens and use that. Okay, that's six times seven, by the way. That's how I got the 42 there. Okay, so f of 6 at the most is going to be 62. So can it be 70? No, it cannot be 70. I mean, explain, use your words. Well, I mean, you would have to write, oh, man. As you move one unit right, the most you can go up is 7. Okay, the most you can go up, that's, that's not group, where I'm missing the R, that's two words, go up, is 7. So through the six right movements, and you can write this down any way you want. Through the six right movements, that's 42. If you start at 20, okay, so if you start at 20, and that's why I, I get really descriptive here. If you start at 20, the highest you'll go is 62. So you won't hit 70. Make sure we, we said no. No. I mean, that's a lot to write. And I'm sure one of you guys can write it, uh, maybe using some more math, you know, ideas or concepts and write it. Less. This is just a very general, you know, in layman's terms, how to write it. There's no way you'll get points taken off if you write it there, unless someone thinks you misspelled group without the R, but you've got to tell them it's really go up, okay? Or instead of go up, you use increases. And that's a fire drill, kids, so I'll be right back. Well, that was a fun little fire drill right in the middle of the video. That was awesome, actually. Um, now let's do 4C. Evaluate the integral from 2 to 4 of f double prime of x dx. All right, much simpler. Again, I am going to state that you have f, f prime, and f double prime. These are the derivatives. They're one derivative away. These are the integrals. Okay, one integral of f double prime will get you f prime. So if I integrate f double prime from 2 to 4, that will give me f prime from my upper bound and the difference or subtraction of f prime to the lower bound, okay? These values are in our table, okay? If we go back to our table, what a mess, okay? f prime of 4 is 1.7, and f prime of 2 is 2, okay? 1.7 minus 2, which will give us negative 0 0.3. There you go. Now these ones without a calculator, I mean, that was really easy. So it tests you on your knowledge of this, okay, going back and forth, and your, your familiarity with integrals. 4D, last one for 4. This isn't too bad. Find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x minus 20 e to the x all over 0.5 f of x minus 10. Well, if we go back to the beginning, this is going to come in real handy. f of 0 is 20. Okay? Bang, bang, bang. So I know that f of 0 is 20. I'm just going to bring that in. 
So if I try this by substitution, we have f of 0 minus 20e to the 0 all over half of f to the 0 minus 10. f to the 0 is 20. Okay. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So that just 20 minus 20 on top would give me 0. And half, okay, f of 0 again is 20. Half of 20 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0 over 0. This is a perfect situation where we use something that we call uh, blue. L'Hopital's rule. And what that states is, if you have a limit and you end up with 0 over 0, you can take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately. Do not take the derivative of the expression. You are not using the quotient rule. Let me state that. You are not using the quotient rule. We're taking the derivative of the top separately and still putting it over the derivative of the bottom. So let's go ahead and do this. The derivative of the top, the derivative of f of x is just f prime of x minus, okay, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So it will say 20 e to the x. All right. All over half of the derivative of f, which is just f prime of x, okay, minus, okay, the derivative of 10, which is 0. Okay, the derivative of 10 is 0. So here we go. I'm still taking the limit as x goes to 0. So let's plug 0 in now. f prime of 0 minus 20 e to the 0 all over 0 0.5 times f prime of 0. Okay, well, let's look back at our table. What is f prime of 0? When x is 0, f prime of 0 is 4. All right. It's 4. So we're going to replace this with a 4 minus 20 times anything to the power of 0 is 1. And 1 half times 4 because f prime of 0 is 4. Let's get a little bit more room here. 4 minus 20 is negative 16 over half of 4 is 2. So my answer is negative 8. As long as you know the L'Hopital's rule, you are good to go. All right? We're done with problem 4. That was very, very, very painless. That, um, that second one, B, that was an oddball. I'll give you that. But we're done. I hope you uh, learned something if you were struggling or, or stuck with one of these parts on four. I hope now you're unstuck, all right? And if you're unstuck, ring that bell. And if you weren't ever stuck to begin with, you know, you're going to ring the bell anyway. All right, give me a follow, give me a like. I will see you for a free response question five. Bye-bye.